this race alone. Hi, I'm Joad Nivo. I'm a mixer, producer, and today I'm going to talk about hybrid mixing. I'm here at Point Blank in the wonderful facility here in East London, working on the SSL duality. Um, I'm going to talk about different methods of uh, approaching a mix um, with a DAW and an analog desk. Um, I hope you enjoy this um, video and uh, for more information you can go to pointblankmusicschool.com Whatever challenge you face, you never win this race alone Exactly the same and it shows You're still afraid of life You never change Instead of embracing us You walk away Why do you pray If you won't change Cause if you're gonna run away And run for cover I will run with you So we have quite a few tracks here. It's a mix of program drums, live drums, some other instruments, mainly electric piano, some percussion, some live percussion, loads of vocals. The way I'm usually um, approaching this type of mix, I mean, in this case, I produced it, I played the instruments. It's Neil Smith um, and myself who wrote the song and she's the artist. Um, so the way I usually approach a mix like that is I do a lot of the work um, in the box and then I use the desk mainly for summing but I also use it uh, for EQing for compression. I don't use desk automation because uh, I've been, I have been doing that for so many years and um, well, it's so much easier uh, doing it on the screen, especially when you have the waveform in front of you and you can either write it live with a mouse, with a controller, or uh, just draw the automation while watching the, the waveform. So that's very convenient. The only downside to that is that if you're going to use um, channel dynamics on the desk, it's going to be post automation. So you could be fighting the, the, the desk compressor. So if you're gonna automate, do some vocal rides and you're gonna raise the vocal level by a lot, then the compressor on the desk will basically compress more. So you'll be kind of, it'll be fighting against your movements. Um, so that means that I use a lot of, um, compression in the box before going to the desk so then the automation uh, rides are going to happen after the dynamics um, and are going to be linear um, other than that hybrid mixing um, is a great way of working these days um, because it allows you to recall a session very quickly um, and in order to do that uh, efficiently and accurately, I'm going to show you how I line up the desk and prepare the session um, for a mix like that. So let's switch to the calibrate uh, calibration session that I have. So in this session, I have the Kramer tape, which I use only for metering. So everything is bypassed and I'm just using it to monitor my input from the desk uh, and then I'm sending um, a tone at minus 18 dB full scale to the desk to channels 1 and 2 um, 
and then I'm going to I'm going to monitor the level. So we not we don't really need to listen to that part of that anyway. Um, so if I look at the meters, that allows me to calibrate channels one and two, and then I switch over to three and four, and that way I work my way making sure that okay, I need to pan those um, that everything is lined up. Just want to do it quickly. So now when we have um, all our um, channels lined up, I can actually go and have another quick view by sending one region after the other, making sure that all the faders are lined up perfectly. And that means that I can know um, that whatever I play is going to have the same level on the desk as the way I'm hearing it in the box. And that allows me to set up the desk again to exactly the same level and basically do a very, very quick recall. Uh, and since I'm only using a few faders for, this, uh, for the purpose of this demo, um, I'm going to basically group um, quite a few channels together um, onto the, the same desk um, input. So if I start with, I have two kick drums here. One is purely for character um, and I actually use some compression um, Funnily enough, with an SSL plugin, I used to, to work on SSL desks. Um, I own a, a big Neve desk, and that's what I use in my studio. However, I still love the sound of SSL um, channel dynamics and EQ, and I'm so used to it. So, so that's kind of my um, usually my first choice because I just know it so well. Um, and it's really punchy, so so I use that a lot. So that's just shaping the the dynamic. I'm not using any EQ here. I'm actually using some mid range, um, yeah, quite a lot actually, and some lows. But I mean, this kick is just giving the punch, and that's more like the main kick. And together, they sound like that and then since this is based on on program drums because it's that groove uh, that I want it to sound like basically like one big loop um, I actually went in the live room and I recorded um, kick drum, snare drum and hi-hat separately but since I already have the, the kick drum source um, I just use the overhead mics so to get that stereo um, spread but also I don't want to compete with the punch of the main kick so together it gives it just that kind of top and makes it a little bit more stereo uh, and the same thing goes with the snare on the snare again I'm using um, I'm using the SSL compressor and boosting some uh, some lows, and then there's another snare, which is the kind of again the punch. Together they work quite well, but then I'm using that live snare and 
together they sound really good the three of them and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send these three tracks to outputs three and four on the desk I can apply some EQ, just give it a bit of top. And maybe some more low mid. And then listen to the kick drum which is still on one and two like the rest of the tracks because I haven't rooted them yet. Uh, now I'm gonna send, I'm gonna solo the live kick together with that. Now that could use, again, some top and some bottom as well but I'm going to use it in bell mode because I don't need the very low frequencies um, now since I already started routing different tracks onto different channels on the desk I'm gonna start by moving other channels out of the way so I'm going to move everything to 5 and 6 for now um, I have the kick on 1 and 2 and then I have the snares on 3 and 4 And the rest at the moment are playing on one on five and six. So, uh, working that way allows me to still um, retain the um, transparency. So I can, at any given moment, I can go back to the box. Um, and I still retain my, my mix unless I do a lot of processing um, on the desk. What I want to show now is another way of working with this desk while basically mixing in the box. Um, I have here the Q-Clone. Q-Clone is um, an EQ we developed at Waves, which allows um, using analog EQ at this, uh, um, in this instance I'm using channel 25, so that's really handy because I don't have to move across the desk, I have one EQ here, and what that does, we developed that something like 10 years ago, um, around the same time that we developed the IR1 convolution reverb and um, I actually had this idea of why, why don't we do uh, a, a real-time convolution EQ and we actually patented um, this product and that was my first patent and I'm really proud of it. What, what that does is it sends uh, a sweep every 400 milliseconds it sends a sweep into the channel that you want um, to basically model the EQ in real time it sounds that's what it sounds like and then I'm basically going to um, put the Q clone on the channel that I want to work with. So what that means is that I'm not sending the actual channel, in this case the electric 88, I'm not sending this channel to the desk but I'm sending this test signal, the sweep tone, 
tone to, to the desk. And every 400 milliseconds, I'm actually creating a model of that EQ. So now when I move the EQ on the desk, sorry, that's a bit loud. I'm gonna hear and see the EQ that I'm applying. Um, and that way I can really get a mix going very quickly because I can now press hold and this is stored. So that just gives me that nice SSL mid-range which is going to cut through better in the mix. And through everything that's going on there. And then I'm, I can actually use the same thing on a different channel. I'm just going to drag this to, to copy it, but then I'm going to flatten the EQ here. So when I press capture, this is going to show me no EQ, and then I can EQ the strings. Again, this kind of nice, slightly harsh top end of the SSL, which we all are so used to and, and love. And now the minute I open a new instance, a new instance of that plugin, you'll see that the previous one has automatically um, gone to hold mode. So now again, this is going to be stored obviously with the session because now it's a plugin. And uh, when I when I reload the song in a week or, or a year's time, it's gonna be, I'm I'm gonna have the SSL EQ um, right here within uh, the session. There's no pressure of having to finish a mix in a day or two days because this, the, it's a lockout studio and you can't do anything else while the, the setup is on the desk and on the outboard and everything. Let's EQ some, like the second set of strings that we have here. So with this one, I just want to get some nice mid again. Let's listen together to, the, to both. Maybe this one has become a little bit louder, so I can actually bring it down um, in view clone. Press hold, and it's there. Now, what happens if I want to go back and tweak this EQ? Now, if I press capture, it is going to switch back to the EQ that I have here on the desk, and then I'm going to lose the curve I have here. So we've added a mode which is add, which is called add. So I flatten the EQ and then I press add. So now what happens, you can see that this is, since the, the sweep is going again through the desk, you can see that there is some change, um, but it's minor. But now I can re tweak or add some more top to that EQ and press hold again. And together. Yes, it's definitely, I can definitely hear that SSL sound on those strings. And what, what we can do now is bypass the strings, send them to their own output, let's say, Seven and eight, why not? And then I'm gonna create the same or similar. Yeah, let's flatten this EQ. Sense of, of presence. So obviously, when I do it on the desk, I get the non-linearity um, of the channel, which does sound sweeter 
um, but oh, that's also down to the fact that it's going through the channel and through the whole circuitry and through the faders. Um, obviously it's not the same curve that I'm applying. This one is slightly more delicate and more in control and what's great about it is that it's safe with the session obviously. Um, let's move on to the vocals. On the vocals, the first thing I use is a de-esser. So that controls the S's and the sh and ch and all those nasty and sometimes even the T's which are going to really come through very strong once I use the amount of compression that I do. Um, so, so as you can see the CLA-2A is working over time. Really holding that vocal in place, it's not going to go anywhere now. And after that I use the Renaissance channel and I'm compressing yet more so I think all in all it's like 20 or 30 dB of compression I don't mind that at all. What you need to pay attention to is that the breaths are not too loud and the sibilance, the sibilance are not too spiky um, and for that reason I use another DSA after the quite um, sharp boost on the highs and the mids um, on, on the CQ. So I'm going to use another DS. Run away and run for cover. I will run with you if you're going to press to and, and you can and see that this one is working much um, smoother because there's not much dynamic left in, in this vocal. Um, except for obviously the, the performance, but in terms of level, it's quite steady. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people say that uh, when you compress vocals, you disturb the natural dynamics and it, you make it um, too, I don't know, sterile and things, things like that. But when you compress the hell out of the vocal in terms of the dynamics, the level dynamics, uh, you allow the nuances and the, the really, um, everything is out in the open and you're going to hear everything because I'm basically, I'm not just reducing level, I'm actually boosting the level by 9 dB here and by probably another 7 dB here. So I'm actually boosting all the quiet and the, the really delicate kind of um, pronunciations and all the, you know, all the, f the, the projection of, uh, of, of the vocal. With that, the S's and all that and the breaths are gonna be quite prominent as well so I'm, I need to control them. One of the things that I use after the second DSA is a transient processor which reduces the transients so that would be the peaks that the, the compressor the, the compressors attack would not be quick enough to limit because of the ballistics because I'm using two compressors. Two compressors actually can create a um, transient enhancer. So I'm using a transient which is reducing the transients mainly on the beginning of words. Run away and run for cover. I will run with you if you're gonna press delete and rediscover a brand new side of you. I can only hope I'm joined by all my brothers and all my Keeping sisters too. Keeping the if you're gonna run vocal out. under control. If you're gonna and then run I'm out. using um, run away this and run um, 1073 emulation to add some mid-range because it has such a sweet um, and real 
kind of mid-range. Let's listen to it without it. Run away and run for cover. I will run with you if you So what I'm doing with that, not only I'm adding some mid-range, I'm also driving the vocal. So I'm going to, so in order to, to get this right, because when we modeled this, we really went for very accurate modeling. And if you would do the same thing on the, on the actual channel, on the Neve channel, you would have to do the same because if you just gonna send it, let me just copy the settings here so I can go back to them. Um, if I'm gonna have the input level at zero, it's just gonna be too distorted when it's in mic, even though it's minimum, there's no boost on the mic, it's just in mic mode. Run away and run for cover. I will run with you. And that's a bit much. So I'm gonna go back to Run away and run for cover. This. I will run with you if you're gonna press delete and rediscover. And that, together a with the mid range boost, gives me that presence that will um, cut through the song. Run away and run for cover. I will run with you if you're gonna press delete and rediscover. Now, since I have this beautiful desk in front of me, I can't resist turning a few knobs on it as well. And I'm gonna add even more high mid and top. Actually, prefer so I'm gonna since I started EQing on the desk. That means that I can't use my method of recalling a, a mix quickly. But I mean, it sounds pretty good, so I'm just gonna stick to it. So I'm gonna reactivate the EQ that I had on the strings. I'm still gonna avoid moving the faders on the desk so I, because it's really easy to control them from here as well and then you can do it in an accurate mode. I know that I'm on minus 12.4 so I'm just going to lower it by 3 dB so I know that I can go back really easily. So obviously in a normal mix I would you know have the, the desk label then I would do it in like much more orderly manner, but this is a demo. So now I have here some percussion that I played. Just some, just to give the, the, the drums. And these are actually wine, wine glasses. And, all my sisters too, if you got a uh, and just to give it some groove, stereo with some some great. Um, so all these can go to not used to this mouse. Uh, all these can go to their designated output. Hear how that opens up the, the, the mix. But what I'm what I'm going to do now. Find out a sweet spot between the boost, the high boost, and the low bass. So it's not too brittle, but it still adds some presence. Again, 
this is gonna bring the level out so I'm gonna bring them all down a little bit and then if we're gonna go back to the verse and I'm gonna actually send all the vocals to the same output which is 9 and 10 so as you can see I'm doing quite a lot of work in the box but I am using the desk um, to give it that um, extra oomph. Now I'm not doing it like I used to, um, splitting every track to its own output and through the desk and doing a lot of processing on the desk. It's more like tweaking. Um, and like I said before, I still rather use the dynamics here on screen because then I can automate there's not much automation here but there is some now there's another percussion element here which is I just played the the toms but just the rims and this gives kind of the beat another Let's listen just to the beat so I really want to emphasize now one plugin which I really love is logic um, enveloper and what that does it can really bring out I want to emphasize the kind of decay at the end of those um, but I can also boost the attacks to make it cut through without any EQ One thing I find a little bit hard to um, work on in this environment because I have to have the speakers really low um, is the bass but still so I'm not going to touch the low frequencies at all but I'm just gonna um, send it to an output on the desk and just boost some mid-range just to get some more grit out of it. Now you can notice that as I add mid range, the lows kind of get a little bit weaker. So I need to find a sweet spot, which that's why I'm using the low band, the low uh, mid. Uh, band because I find it on the SSL I find it a little bit more forgiving for the bass when boosting mid-range anyway, that gives exactly the same some presence shows. and in the chorus I'm using the same bass um, which as you can see is side-chained by the by the kick so I'm using the same one but it's just more distorted again with the Sheps 73 I love that distortion so it's the same sound same settings it's just more distorted so, so it cuts through more in the chorus so I'm gonna send it to the same the same output to get that mid range. Only hope I'm joined by all my brothers and all my sisters too. If you're gonna run out, if you're gonna run out, yes, it's amazing. 
so so at this point I can say that this is the first time that I'm actually working on this desk and it's really sounding good I mean the the, the EQs feels the, the EQs feel um, very much like the SSL I know they they remind me of the 8000 actually the most if I can think of one um, specific desk which I which I really really love there was something kind of old and new um, in it and and this one reminds me of that it's always nice to work on a new desk without any hums and noises and and switches that don't work and all that really exciting times to be uh, you know to be doing to be making music and, and mixing I still enjoy doing this very much especially when I when I get to to produce something um, and write it like like this song together with with Nina um, play all the instruments um, mix it direct her when she's singing um, it's great fun I think we covered everything and uh, yeah thanks for watching whatever challenge you face you never win this race alone